Yeah, it's still grayed out, which is weird. I don't know why it's that is so strange. It's um, cool. I can do this without the uh, without okay. the shared screens. It's just a right. little bit. What a shame! A All right, bit. no big deal. Um, let's see. Okay, so we've got this Google Plus community, and um, we're taking notes as we go about what works. So, in a way, this is a this is a good way for us to uh, uh, pass on something to the next group that comes along. Um, and we use it to encourage ourselves as writers and editors, and Lord knows you need that as a writer. Um, and it helps us become better social networking managers and WordPress geeks and uh, soon Google Analytics managers because one of the things, one of the charges that we've gotten from our department head is to, is to get the word out about who we are, uh, who our department is, and who our grads are in the department. So. Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty hefty charge, really. Um, and in a way, we are making up as we go along within the constraints of this mission and the tools that we are accessing. Uh, but Google Plus is really helping us to establish ourselves, to enable us to reflect about it, and it's kind of the beating heart of our blog. It's, um, it also helps us to. community and we also have Google Hangouts on air uh, every Monday we um, we present um, well I get everybody together using Google Hangouts on air and that's one of the, the really great fits I mean to me Google Google Hangouts on air are the is the real tipping point for me using Google um, we get together, we have an editorial board meeting, we assign the stories for the week, uh, we talk about issues and problems, uh, we play around a little bit, it's a social, uh, you know, social lubricant sort of uh, place to go on Monday evenings. Uh, they get me, they keep me up kind of late sometimes, um, but it's, uh, you know, it's a way we get together once a week. Plus, um, anybody who misses the Hangout can also watch it because it will save the cool thing about Google Hangouts on air as opposed to just Google Hangouts is that it saves the video and it uh, automatically uh, sends it to uh, YouTube. So anybody who misses uh, or if you want somebody to see it from the outside, say the uh, department head or the, the overall supervisor for the interns, then they can see what's going on. So it's totally transparent, and these are public. And I've told them, I told our students that these are public hangouts. So, um, you know, this is along with the Google Plus community is an, another part of how we work together. Um, another way we manage our work, and again, this is all part of that small pieces loosely joined. You don't have to use a tool like this, but um, <clears throat> I use uh, uh, a corkboard, digital corkboard, and there's several of these around. I just found this one is is the best one for me. I've used it before, and it's called Lino. And in Lino, you know, I uh, I've divided it up into three pieces. It's the uh, we use a, I use a, a tool called Kanban. It's a Japanese productivity tool, and basically you have three columns. You've got the ready column. You've got the doing problem column, and then you've got the done column. So as you move, as you as as a writer, you take something from the left hand side of the screen, and you you begin to do it. You move it to the doing part, and then when you're done, you put it over in the you know whether it's a post or a report or whatever it is. Um, you can. Uh, um, you know, you can get it. You can get it done, basically. So, uh, this is open to our department head. It's open to uh, to the intern supervisor that's over all all of us, and it's open to anybody we invite into it. If they have, uh, if there are uh, people who are doing like a creative writing Facebook page or uh, the English department Facebook page, they can add stories here as well. 
uh, it gets kind of messy and at times, but I find it works pretty well, and students like it a lot. They're using it themselves for other purposes, which is really cool. So it's called Lino. And if I can slide please. Okay. What we want to make sure in our blogs, one of the things is that we're, we're basically a news organization about English majors. So we want our, our posts to be timely, and we want them to be newsworthy. And <clears throat> we have a Facebook page attached to this as well as a Twitter page. So everything that gets posted automatically, by we use uh, that automatic uh, tool called IFT, I-F-T-T. Uh, stands for if this then that. So anytime we post on our WordPress blog, it automatically goes to uh, uh, it goes to our Facebook page, and it gets tweeted out as well. Um, and we're also experimenting with other we're trying, automating same things like Instagrams <coughs> and newsletters as well. Um, this article that you see right here was Cornell West came to campus, and I don't know if you've ever had a chance to hear Cornell West. He's really an amazing an amazing writer and thinker. And um, this is the kind of the teaser that leads up to it. And then the, the person who wrote the teaser also wrote the article about, um, about it as well. Um, and, you know, it was that a chance for them to narrate the story about his coming to visit. And it's, uh, you know, we push not just stuff like this, where you go and listen to a lecture, but we also push uh, writing workshops, uh, classes that are unusual, that students want to know about, um, publishing opportunities, uh, poetry, and other uh, fiction readings, and just all things that are timely for English majors. And that's the, that's the most important part of this. We, have, we emphasize timely, timely information for our majors. But we've also got um, <clears throat> other extended sorts of tools. The article that you see behind the text here is, How Did You Become an English Major? And Ashley Dyer is the writer of this. And she writes, she's been writing consistently every week, uh, asking people how they became an English major. And again, it's obvious the, why you would want to do that, uh, especially if your purpose is to create identity. Um, and <clears throat> so it's not just one-off posts. It's just, just not just a news site. Uh, so we get these long-term um, kind of identity markers for majors in general. And kind of personally important ones for the interns as well. This is one of our goals is for, for all of our interns to begin using their own blogs and to develop uh, their skills. and. Especially for after these internships are over, um, we want to promote their own work uh, and the work of the blog in public ways. So it's like about again about having that public audience, and we want them to develop digital rhetorical skills, which a lot of English departments aren't really doing right now, and uh, so they've kind of put their majors off by themselves and on their own. So uh, you know we want to get our English our interns to extend themselves and reach beyond their grasp and then to use those skills and attitudes and mindsets in the world and including their own blogs. So we have, you know, we have timely purposes and we have extended purposes. Uh, and I like to say it's as handy as a pocket on a shirt. That's an expression here in Kentucky. I loved it when I first heard it and I love it even more now. So it's kind of uh, the internship is the pocket on the shirt. Uh, it serves our university community, and it serves the needs of each intern. Um, and it makes the abstract concrete. Uh, this is deliberate practice of what Harold Jarsh called seek, sense, share. You know, you seek information, and you make sense of it, and then you share it. And to me, it's the central skill that you need as an English major as an information worker, especially. And uh, that's the, I think that's the genius of a collective web, web log, is the practice, it doesn't ever stop, and it's, it's always useful work worth doing. So handy as a pocket on a shirt. 
also. So we've just started. We're, we're about six weeks in on this. And if my next slide will pop up, what, is, what we're going to talk about, what I want to talk about is where we're headed with this. And we're still loading here. Um, the next slide is about where we're going. So I'm going to talk about that. Maybe go back to the previous slide and see if I can come back to it. Let me try. It doesn't seem to want to let. I got it. I got it. Okay. Do you see it now? Okay. Terry? It's there. Not yet. Okay, um, I think it's coming. Well, anyway, others see um, it. we all see it though, Terry. I can talk. About it. Okay. Um, there are lots of things that we can do. Uh, we can still be a news organization. We can still be. Uh, we can extend our skills. Uh, one of the things that will come out of the Google Plus community is a style manual. Uh, for the blog for future internship collectors. In other words, you know, what do you do when you are revising somebody else's? Uh, how do you use images in your blog posts? And so we're, we're creating that as we go along. We're also doing something that's I think is kind of exciting and we're not really know where it's going to go, but we're creating an informal consultancy of both current and former interns. And <clears throat> You know, so they can show others how to use the same the same tools loosely joined, like I've been talking about here. Um, we're creating marketing plans for sp specific segments of our audience, and uh, uh, each each of the interns is developing a, a marketing plan for the, a particular segment, which is really important if we're going to meet our our remit from our uh, uh, from our department head. Um, also, we want to create MOOCs, and I've got another slide in a minute about that. Um, and we want to create ebooks and other texts. And one of the things, the best things about using WordPress, and I highly recommend WordPress as a platform for any for any age level. One of the things about it is that you can create ebooks with just by using a plugin called Anthologize. In fact. If you can do almost anything, like a newsletter, there's a newsletter called Wasija that is just a plugin that's very easy to use. So, the WordPress platform is a hub for doing all kinds of other things as well. So, I'm going to have you turn the turn the next one um, because it doesn't seem to be working for me. Those roosters sure sound ah, nice. Okay, there it is. Ah, College consultant. Let me go back to. Oh, you saw the MOOC now? Let me go back to MOOCs. Ah, you're fine. Great. I'm good now. Um, so uh, I'm going to just talk briefly about MOOCs because it's kind of uh, the thing that I'm really keen on right now. I've, I've been involved in a lot of them, and uh, I'm a classic serial MOOC dropout on a regular basis. Um, the pl Oh, somebody wanted me to repeat the name of the plugin. It's called Anthologize. And the other one is called Wasija. Okay, back to MOOCs. Um, we have a lot of, of undergraduate expertise here that's developing in our in our collective blog, um, and there's a real need for um, increasing cre increasing technical capacity with these blogs. Um, so. They're a perfect platform for developing all the skills that you want you know, in digital rhetoric. Um, and the cool thing is that they don't have to be massive in order to be mookish. You know, people overemphasize the fact that the, the first part, the M, is massive, but I like to think of them as massively open. In other words, they're open to lots and lots of people. And I think that. Uh, all of the digital spaces for creating a MOOC are the similar or the same as the tools that you need for creating uh, the uh, the 
collaborative blogging that we did, the collective blogging that we did. You know, you've got a Google Plus, you've got Hangouts, you've got Twitter, you've got a central blog, you've got Facebook, you've got Instagram. All these things can be used for a MOOC just as well as they can be for collective blogging. So our interns right now are developing the skills so that they could create a MOOC. And my plan, anyway, is for them to do a MOOC either directed at high school students or a segment of their of their uh, uh, of the majors in the department, um, and uh, they are called flash MOOCs. You know, just like a flash mob. It's a one day thing. It might be a few hours thing, but the idea is to create the space, the digital space. That's really what a MOOC is. It's just a digital space where people can come to and share and and play and have fun because play is such an important part of of a MOOC, a, a successful MOOC. The MOOCs that don't succeed that I've seen are drab, dismal affairs that are really not very open at all. Uh, so uh, they have this, they're developing the skills that are needed to in order to uh, to create a MOOC as well. Um, the college consultancy is um, the the picture I used here. John Belushi is kind of humorous in a way, but it's. Uh, we're dead serious about this, um, and I want them to create their own consultancy uh, it, because it's a powerful way to connect the grads as they move throughout their English major journey. Um, so we got former interns, and we've got grads, alums, and we've got grad students, and in other interested parties that might serve each other as they move into other jobs in the community. And so what I feel. To create blogs and to create collective blogs and to create MOOCs. Um, and beyond, you know, I just, there's just so many possibilities here. Um, you know, in enlarging our audience, um, I'm working with Alan Levine and a couple of other folks right now trying to adopt uh, some of the tools that the uh, uh, online course DS 106 digital storytelling 106 is using um, to help create a community because the biggest problem with our department our majors in our department is that they are not a community uh, they don't know each other very well and even within their own specialties like creative writing or professional writing or linguistics they don't really know each other very well within those so what I'm hoping to eventually do with this is to use this as a way to create community, not just as a way to reflect community. That's a big task. I'm not sure how how, how that's going to work, but uh, so I, you know, I I don't think any of this would be without um, lots of help from all of our interns. We got five interns, and. Uh, they really are uh, truly special people to me. Um, and we're trying to widen that to a larger group of people. Um, we've got our former interns who are, who have been very helpful as well. We've got, uh, you know, our department, uh, my, uh, we have uh, someone who handles all of our internships, uh, Angie Jones, who's just been fabulous. And also my department head, um, who gave me the chance to actually create this internship and of course the more success he sees the more ex the greater success he expects so i think i've created a monster here um and if you need to get in touch with me um you know i'm happy to help anybody who who wants to do the same thing or something similar something because like i said you know we are making the road by walking it and it's I expect the where we actually end up um, will be quite different than where I think we're going to end up. But it, I think that in in a good way. Uh, so, you know, um, I'm stuck on the thank you slide, but uh, I do want to thank you all for coming today, and and thank you for coming back. Uh, 
So if you, you know, we can get together, we can create a, a Google Plus community. If you want to talk, we can get together on Hangouts, anything you want. If I can help you with uh, creating a, a collective community and beyond what I've done here today, uh, even with the interruptions, then I'm happy to do so. Questions, I'm wide open Terry, here for questions. people are going to be coming in because they're only getting the link now. Um, I was in touch with WizIQ okay. support, and they seem to think, well, they made the class public, first of all, so it's not private anymore. But they seem to think that uh, they can see the screen. In other words, um, uh, whoever came in after is able to see the screen sharing button. If uh, not, don't do not click on the X. But if you because then you would end the class again. But if you could uh, log out and come back in. Um, that would be great because then you'll probably be able to see the screen sharing button. I really would. We have time. I really would uh, like to be able to see what you've got in there if um, you're allowing us to go into the private areas mm -hmm. of the blog. Well, how, do I, how do I log out? Well, that's the question. I think that um, the way to log out is to go into your browser and uh, click on the X on your browser for this uh, class on the tab. There's a tab, not in the class, but just beyond the class, there's a tab uh, with a black X, not a red X. Do you see that on your okay. Safari? Yeah, that's, sorry for not telling you I that see, at the beginning. I see a red X. No, 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 do not touch the red X. I, I, that's the one I'm not gonna touch, no. but I don't see a black X Oh, okay. anywhere. All right, so if you could go into your file and open up open location, the only reason I know all this is not because I'm smart, because I've gone through a lot of these errors, so-called errors, so you learn from. So if you go into File on Safari, Open Location, you'll be able to get the browser. Are you seeing the browser now? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it says it's taken me to the address bar at the top. Exactly. So then you'll see on, the, on somewhere, you'll see the X to the tab where you are it, I see a plus you see and a plus. I see uh, next to the plus you'll see you should see an X so that you can exit the um, well actually what you can do you can just go to the top and click on the X on the left not in the classroom but on your Safari and that will just get rid of everything because I don't think you have other windows open so you can no just, I don't right so you can just click there as long as it's not the X N class, that's. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no X on my Safari. Oh, really? Next to the. Oh, up, no. at, up at the top, it should be a red X, like on your Safari. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the one I meant. Sorry for confusing you. And that shuts my whole Safari down. Exactly, and then open it again, because that's the only way okay. I can think of, it. and then um, come back. Okay. Just make sure you have the co-presenter link. I have no idea why I'm in this Terry again. Uh, sorry, folks. Technology does have um, have its has its life, as far as I'm concerned. So um, I, I really want to get a chance to uh, see the screen. Oh, the screen sharing is back. Is is back? Wow, that's amazing. So uh, support was right. I just noticed that um, the screen sharing button. Tom, you could be my witness. I like to have a witness just to make sure that I'm that it's not I'm not telling you stories. Tom, can you see the screen sharing button now? Yes. Okay, so as soon as Terry left, support was right. Uh that's what happened. It's back. So it, hopefully when Terry comes back, we'll be able to get the uh screen sharing going here. Thank you everyone for your patience. Um, I think that's um, a very, very good quality. It'll keep us uh, stress-free. Hopefully, Terry's back. All right, welcome back, Terry. It worked. The minute you left the class, the screen sharing button came back like magic. Do you see it now? I do. Right. So I'm going to take you to the Google Yay! Plus community. Okay, support is here with us. So if you have any problems, um, we've got support. You may want to take away, put an X on your video camera. I'm going to do the same. It makes it better from what I hear. 
X on my video. Yeah, channel. it's gray again, uh, Tom, because I grayed you out, but not because, you know, I figured, unless you want me to keep it for you, I can do that. Okay, Tom. Oops. Okay. No, you don't want it? I can do it. There you go. Um, I think Terry just got booted out. Or maybe not. Oh, no. You should be able to hear me right now. Yeah, I... we hear you. Yes, I thought you were booted out or something. I saw your name flash by. Okay. okay. Um, I'm not sure that it... We hear you, but I don't know if you're... Does it say that you're screen sharing? Are you getting all that stuff from... Um, uh... yeah, it's, yeah, it says I'm screen sharing. Oh, it does? Uh, okay. So... Oh, well, let me try one more. Let me try to screen share one time here. You have to accept all kinds of stuff. Uh, Mac asks you to accept... Um, you're going to get all kinds of information there to accept yes. Java, to accept Flash, to sign your Mac away to all these um, undesirable. We're going to have a desktop for the Mac soon, so that should be great. Right now it's only for the um, Windows. Yeah, it's it's just not going to let me do it. It's not. Nelly, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It's, what is it saying? Even with, uh, uh, it says I'm connecting to the server. Okay, Terry. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got support here. Maybe you can tell us a little bit. Okay, support. I'm giving you um, a chance to express what you have to say in words. No, he's using. Uh, thank yeah. you, Nelly. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, hi Terry, uh, I'm Nitish from uh, VizIQ Support. Yes, so I've got a screen that says, if the screen sharing does not start, click here to fix. So, uh, I am, I am. Okay, yes. um. No, no, I'm asking, uh, what, are, what system are you using? Are you in, using Windows computer no, or Mac. are you using... He's using a Mac. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. using a Mac. Okay. Uh, well, Terry, is there any chance that I can contact, directly contact you? Um, well... So I'm not way. sure we have enough time to, these people have been so, so generous, and I'm not sure we have enough time. Whatever Nelly wants to do is fine with me. Okay. Um, well, uh, tell me, okay, tell me, uh, in your Mac, is the Java software installed or not? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm using the Safari browser right now. And uh, all right, I was right. So uh, all right, Terry, don't worry. I'll guide you that how to you know. Uh, I'll guide you that how to do it. Okay. Uh, go to your system preference. Okay. I'm there. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, stop sharing the screen and go to system preference. Okay. And the okay. system preference, can you see the option Java? Okay, click on it. Java folder, yes, right. Hold on a second, it's not letting me get out of the screen share. It won't let me out of the screen share. Okay. It's got try again, loading failed, try again. And no other options. Okay, uh, well, Terry, um, what you need to do? Yeah, on the system preferences, there's an option Java. Okay, 
you need to open that. Okay. Under preferences, Java. Yes, that's right, Java. Okay, got it. And there is an option, security. Can can you see it? Can you see that option? Yes. Okay. Now, when you click on security, there's three options: very high, high, and medium. Got it. Okay, you need to you know pull that to the medium uh, medium. Uh, Got it. Click OK or apply. Down. Okay, and click on apply and OK. Got it. Okay. All right. And you need to restart the class again. Yeah, apply and OK. Okay. Now you need to relaunch the class again. What do you mean by relaunch? You mean he needs to go okay. in, come, go out, and come back? Refresh the screen. Refresh the screen. Log. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll refresh the screen here. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Um, a book that I'm reading that I think you're going to find really interesting. It's research that's been done for over 18 years on living the present and mindfulness meditate or meditation of any kind. It's called The Emotional Life of Your Brain, and it's by Richard J. Davidson. Um, it continues the idea of the uh, quality it's the uh, the psychology of the mind apparently um, there is research done or research has been done for the past 18 years on how immediate uh, mindfulness works in instant <laughs> so um, Terry you're back I'm back I'll try okay. one more time here all okay. right all right so um, we're here to learn, and we start are. Screen. We're learning. All right. So start screen sharing. Oh yes. It's is it great out it. again for you? Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Actually, I think I'm making some progress here. Yay! Wonderful. We've got it. But okay. but my video's on. I wanted to take it off before. Okay. I thought. It so you were actually seeing the site show stuff. Well, right now, triumphant. yeah, now you can go into your website. It'll take, each of us has their own, um, you know, I guess, uh, system time, whenever we see it. But uh, we can get the chat. I'll see if everybody else is seeing it. The chat's at the bottom left for some of you. If you could just add in the chat, if you can see it. Um, can you see Yes, I can see it now, but I see everything else too. I see your screen is mirroring. Mirror. Oh, see. Yeah. Yeah, that's. So I see two screens. Okay. Let me see if I can. I don't know how that happens. I've seen it before. I don't know. Yeah, me too. Happens on. So you're not seeing. Are you seeing the English majors collective? Yeah, we see it on the there? right, but we also see the classroom. Oh, I know why. Because you've got. Okay, your screen has. You've you've arranged your screen that way. Can you have just one um, one site open instead of two, or is that is that possible? What? Let's see. I the only screen I'm having I'm showing right now is the one for the English majors web. I've got two tabs open in Safari. Oh. Okay. The one for 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 with the IQ and one for yeah, can English you have, majors collect. Can you minimize one of them? Maybe that'll do it. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Try. You see, no, they just minimized the whole thing. Oh, great! Oh, okay. No, no. Um, well, that we works? see we see your desktop. I think because it it's it's um, was someone putting on their jacket. Yes, Rogers. Um, but it's not. It's apparently we're going to have a problem with it. Not you using it says properly. he says you're using two monitors. 
or something. I don't know how that works. I, I don't do that. Uh, okay. I don't know how I'm doing that. Um, neat. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, now, okay, great. Now I see your G. Okay, I see your um, Google Plus. Okay. You see the community? You see my, yes. my cursor moving around? Yes. Um, okay. Well, I, I see the baby, private, five members, okay. yes. Okay. And do you see a, a, a mouse highlighter anywhere? I don't, know if, on and off? I don't know if I'm able to see that, but I can only tell you if I see this. Oh, yeah, I see a mouse, and it's not mine. Yes, okay. I see it on oh, there's a a tremendous amount of lag here so okay. what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put the uh i'm going to put the mouse highlighter here and on in this part of google plus you can set up things like you can talk about possible posts what you do is you create a uh, you create a, a short post like uh, um kaylee brasher has created a, a a short post here um uh, tiffany um uh, hughes has created one below that that she's the webmaster for this week, so she's making notes about Instagram. Yeah, I see that. And mm -hmm. so the cool thing you can do with this is that you can create categories for discussion, and if you get this, the interns to simply uh, categorize their posts in certain ways, then by the end of the semester, we'll have a style manual that is basically written out in the raw. You know, questions come up, you solve them, they put a post in here and they label it style uh, manager. Or the next group of interns that comes in, they can look at the social community manager's notes and say, oh, they've had the same problem before, blah, blah, blah. You know, so the tool, it's a, it's a great way to, to kind of categorize uh, work in progress and to talk about uh, problems that people are having. And for, you know, sometimes they'll get on here and say, I can't do that post. Uh, can you cover for me? And sometimes they just talk about off-topic stuff, you know. So it's their space. Uh, somebody, Andrea Graham, over on the right-hand side said, hey, because I put a draft up of my romance writer's post. Hope you guys enjoy it. Nice. Um, so what she's doing is she's she really, she's calling for editing. She wants people to come and take a look at it. And in WordPress, you can make things a draft, or you can actually say publish on a particular date, and it'll do that, and uh, that's what I, I recommend that students do is that they ask for, uh, make a call for draft revisions and things like that, but they go ahead and put a date in there that it's going to be published from. So uh, this is a way for them to talk about the behind the scenes stuff. Um, if you look over in the right hand cor corner about, about this community, um, you know, we've begun to come up with a mission statement of sorts. I really don't like that term very much, but for lack of a better one. Uh, and that's evolving here on this page. Uh, and it's a private community, so you know you can invite people to join, but we haven't yet. And I think that's worked out really well for us. So we've got the blog, which is all public, and we've got this, which is behind the scenes, under the dashboard, uh, machinations on our part. Um, and then you've got the, we've also got the Lino it tool, which is actually a public tool. People could send us stuff all the time. We haven't gotten to that point yet. But uh, um, yeah, you have a certain amount of trust that goes on in this that uh, people will do the right thing. I mean, you know, I, I give them a certain amount of pushing, uh, but don't need a whole lot because these are, these are college students who are already doing their own major. So, you know, you don't have to do a whole lot. That's, uh, that's wonderful. But, yeah, so what you're saying is, um, from your experiences, Google Plus communities are a lot better than, say, Yahoo groups of the past or uh, Facebook, uh, which could be private as well or secret or, you know. Right. Yeah, I totally agree right. with you. Yeah. I, I mean, so, you know, that's that's kind of a little bit behind the scenes there. I don't, uh, I'm glad we were able to at least get this much. Thank, thank you very much. You. For thank you, thank you, Terry. It. Thank you for your patience. Can you bring us back? Um, everything's on the left, the bottom left, for those of you who lost your um, your chats and uh, and so on. Just pop it up. Uh, okay, there's an arrow. Okay, great. 
Um, okay, so you can play around with that. I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to thank the participants, of course. <laughs> and Terry, for you, for, I mean, that's living proof that you are the right person for the job. <laughs> kind of thing um, if you can I mean this is an example and I think you probably uh, you know tell your colleagues about this we're always learning and technology is developing and and I think having the right mindset you know from practice right. and I'm sure you've had a lot of practice having that mindset is going to always uh, be with you and you'll be able to open up to you know situations and be flexible like you were yeah. I mean, that's that's part yeah. of it. And I'm really grateful and I'm happy to have met you. Um, and I hope we'll be able to continue um, collaborating. So we're going to go to the next yeah. session with an amazing speaker. She's also in the United States, Cheryl. Um, so join us. Terry, you're also invited <laughs> to join us. Thank so thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm closing the session. And there's the link, Terry, if you want to join us. Uh, in the uh, WizIQ courseware area. Thank you.